Hello, and welcome to Slice of Wine, the podcast that gives you the snippets of the people, places, and innovations behind the barrel. I'm your host, Amy Cronin, and today I'm talking with the marvelous Lisa Schuster. Uh, Lisa is the National Marketing Director for Innovation Brands, which was recently acquired by um, Italian Wine Brands, the largest private Italian group, um, and the first to be listed on the Milan Stock Exchange. So with that, Lisa brings a vast portfolio of Italian brands to the United States, and I am very happy to be bringing her here to say hello to all of you. Hey, Lisa. Hi, everyone. Hi, Amy. It's fantastic to see you. Thank you for having me today. Yeah, I'm so excited to have you on the show. So, um, I know. <laughs> you know I am. <laughs> I am. <laughs> of course you are. Amy. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you for the intro. As you said, um, you know, Innovation Brands, I've been with the company for about since almost the inception, since june of 2013 innovation brands was formed that year january of that year mm -hmm. and what it was was the company the winery eno italia who is our major supplier they were frustrated by the importer model in the u.s huh, so. and they made a determination to take their fate into their own hands and open an import company and we are that import company and as you said just recently um we had a partner come in, make a major acquisition within the company. We still have our original partners on board. Um, you know, not a lot changing here in the U.S. other than it is a huge Italian company coming in, traded on the Milan Stock Exchange, as you mentioned. So what it's really doing is expanding our portfolio, going from the top of the boot, all the way down to the heel, the wow. tip of the toe in Italy. Anything you could want, Italy. Look to Innovation Brands. Here we are. We have some very exciting wines that we're launching and bringing into the portfolio that um, were showcased to rave reviews at Vin Italy, the first Vin Italy that occurred in After. how many years? Uh, I know. This year. We have a Super Tuscan coming in. We have a Primitivo, so 98-point rated wines. We are just super excited, a lot going on here. So thank you so much for having me on board at this exciting time. Well, I love Italian wine, and I love to hear that you'll be, you know, you're bringing in such a wide range uh, of products throughout Italy. I mean, there are just so many wines to discover in Italy. Number one import in the U.S. Yes, yeah. As a number one import in the U.S. You think France? No, Italy. And Americans love Italian wines. To to be, I mean, like they gravitate towards the, the Italian wine portfolio. Like Italian wine, Italian food, Italian lifestyle, Italian style. The one thing that Italy is known for that I've always seen the craftsmanship, yeah, the quality, the craftsmanship. And that's the thing I have to say about innovation brands. There's not a single bottle of wine that I've had a single glass of wine that that's not quality first in bottle. Mm -hmm. And the number one thing that's coming with Italian wine brands is as well, the number one value, we will not compromise on quality. So we never, ever, ever compromise on quality and most of the time when you see our ratings in our wines it's always over delivers over delivers because we play yeah. we've been playing in this arena of the solid premium price point you know that yep. solid what people are looking for that premium price where everyone's playing right now and a lot of times when you're in that price point it's hit or miss what's in that bottle and if you ever see imported by innovation brands on that back label you know you are getting your money's worth in them some well so like one of your most popular brands like what in that category in that premium category is the Gemma de Luna right so oh for Gemma de Luna like it's a big I've Gemma got the de little Luna. baby to fit on the little baby screen it's today a baby bottle I have a Gemma de Luna but it's a big bottle <laughs> <laughs> no, must you got the big bottle. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so you know it's fun because you know the the consumer's changing and in coming in, they're yeah. drinking wine in non wine traditional venues, looking for portability, looking for things, and this is really yeah. fun because Gemma de Luna was conceived to elevate the everyday wine experience from the extraordinary 
to from the ordinary to the extraordinary. Yeah. Mess that one up. Well, it could be the Jennifer extraordinary Lewis and beyond. <laughs> And beyond. <laughs> exactly. So taking it from the ordinary to the extraordinary. And what we really did, what was really done with this was to take those most beloved Italian varietals, Moscato, Pinot Grigio, Prosecco that everyone's in love with, and take those in, and pump them up to the next step. Make them, when you drink Moscato here in the U.S., a lot of what you're going to taste versus Moscato in Italy, it's not the same type of wine. Yeah. It's different. So to really take those Pinot Grigio, there's so much kind of ubiquitous, uninspired Pinot Grigio out uh -huh. there. But when you go to Italy and you get that true Pinot Grigio with the body from the Della Venezia, from those areas, from those vines that have been there, it's a, it's a yeah. different, different experience. Well, so let's talk that, about this. That's what I love about Moscato. Yeah. Well, so, and let's talk a little more about Moscato. So, I mean, like Pinot Grigio, we know that's going to sell. And, you know, and Mus Prosecco, we know that's going to sell. Moscato be is beautiful. Like Italian Moscato is beautiful. But Moscato in the United States has sort of, um, it's it can be the sweetness, the, the yeah. cloying, the sugar. Yeah, so there are brands yeah, it that can are really oh, taken to the sugar side. It's kind of the manipul you yeah. know, the manipulation of it. You know, um, people want lower alcohol now. You know, the lower you go in alcohol, it's a trade off with your sugar right. and kind of coming in. So what it really is to have that winemaking team going in and treating it like the true Italian Moscato, what you're gonna get, you know. I'm always hesitant to use the word sweet because here in the U.S. people think sweet, sugar, right. sugary, and you know, sugar is, it's the enemy now. Nobody wants sugar, low sugar, no sugar, zero sugar. But in Italy, it's that grapey, fruitiness, true flavor. It's almost more like that Moscato d'Asti yep. without price tag. Right. Well, and so, like, I think it's a kind of a, a, a nice distinction to sort of explain how Italian Moscato is made. I mean, the, I'm looking at this bottle. The, the alcohol level is 7.5%. Okay, so we're talking extremely low alcohol levels, which, as you know, anybody who's counting calories, which I'm not because I'm too lazy to. <laughs> the hell with that. And it's wine. <laughs> I'm not going to let that run. You have your wine. But, you know, alcohol contributes to calories more than like sugar, sugar, you know, because alcohol converts to, to yes. sugar. So, you know, just starting at 7.5%, you're already, this is a low calorie product in and of that. So the sweetness that comes from the Moscato isn't coming from. Uh, fortification or like grapes that are too ripe or whatever. So how is just, I'd love for you to kind of explain how Moscato is made and how it has this low alcohol and the sweetness. It's, you know, it's the fruit. It's getting the fruit. It's cold weather fruit. It's from Piemonte. Mm -hmm. It's from those regions. It's Northern Italy. It's where, I mean, everybody knows true, true Italian Moscato comes from Northern Italy. Mm -hmm. That's where that's where it comes from. So it's starting with those fruit. You know, we go out into the vineyard. They're looking in the vineyard. They're they're sourcing those premium grapes with our grower relationships yeah. that we have and coming in. It's making sure you're getting those premium grapes. As you say, getting them picked at the right time, mm -hmm. not allowing that fruit to hang on the vine for too right. long to develop to develop more sugar to do that. Also, I just saw you took a little taste. So if you take a taste, you see there's that balance yeah. of acidity that crispness that effervescence that comes in that you don't have with a lot of these moscatos that have kind of been as you say yeah. fortified or there's too much sugar developed in mm -hmm. and going in there's even a measure that i wish i could talk about it a little bit more but it's kind of real winemaker geekiness of that sugar level that's in the grapes before they yeah. even start working with it and coming in, but yeah. when you you get that crispness, and yeah. the funny thing is with this, when when we first launched this, and we launched it with Moscato, 
and I would be doing a lot of events and a lot of people coming up. So you do get those people that'll say, oh, I'm not a Moscato mm -hmm. drinker. And I say, do me a favor, just try it. This is different. It really is. This is different. Yeah, it really is. I mean, there's, it's, it's insanely well balanced. Like this is Italian, this is true Italian Moscato, right? So the, it's, it's very, very well balanced. This is it. Um, there's lots of bright acidity. The, the sweetness is natural sweetness from the grapes. It's, you know, it's a little grapefruit. That's really, you know, not grapefruit, but fruit of the grape. Grapiness. <laughs> yeah, actual yeah, juice. Yeah, the grapiness. Yeah. Yes, yes, the, but it's it's a delicate, it's very delicate. It's it's light, it's not cloying at all. It's, you know, right off, yeah. clean, clean, clean. You can't, you know, you can have more than one glass. I could have this all day long. This is perfect with you. <laughs> you can have this all day long. It's perfect with a shark. And again, it's low alcohol. So you want to sit with a little charcuterie platter, or a little, you know, let's be really Italian, la do dolce vita. Let's let's do our aperitivo. Yeah. Um, in coming in. Let let's do that and have that. It's perfect. It goes with so much. It's great on its own. You want to have a little charcuterie or how about this? You're celebrating someone's birthday. We've got some sweets. We've got some cupcakes, some cake pops, but Hey, we want to pop some bottles. What goes with dessert? Guess what? Moscato. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. Moscato. People think, Oh, dessert wine. I don't want sweet wine, fortified wine coming in. You don't need it. Moscato. And Hey, it's got that ever effervent effervescence, that bubbliness. Yeah. That's another one. This is a full on spumante. This is not frizzante. This is the full-on sparkling yes. wine. Yeah. No. So how it, in the trade? So, so you know, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. This, oh, I'm, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no, that's okay. I was gonna say. So in the trade. So how does you know a retailer, a restaurateur, how do people um, get the consumer past the you know um, the oh I don't drink Moscato or I don't know about that like you know, get them to the discovery mode for a product like this. Cause it is one that once you taste it, it's really hard to say that's not for me ever. You know, it's, it's for you. <laughs> once you taste it, it is hard to say it. So I, I wholeheartedly believe the best way to get people to buy wine mm -hmm. is to get wine into their mouth. Yeah. Give them the opportunity to try it because we've been there. You've been there. The wall of confusion, right? Yeah. The wall of confusion. What's the difference between this bottle that has a $30 price tag and this bottle that has a $10 price tag? Where do I go? I don't understand this set. Is it by country? Is it by varietal? Why is this up on the top shelf? Why is this buried here? That wall of, you know, how do you break through that yeah. wall of confusion? So one of the things that we did is you can never mistake the bottle. Right. No, that is you can, a very you can never, ever, ever mistake the bottle because once you see it and know it, it's right there. Boom, pop out its shelf. And we know that by and far the majority of consumers, I think it's almost 70 percent in the last study that was a, a study that was done on this, that consumers, they, they want to break through that confusion. They want quick shopping. You know, people are running in and out. The people who still even go into the store quick in and out. A great thing now that we've worked through COVID, fingers crossed, our tastings are coming back, tasting demos coming back, which is great, you know, to have it there. So we are a big believer in doing that, helping to support our retailers and, and letting them know, again, let your consumers taste this, let, let your consumers try this. I mean, Moscato fans are Moscato fans, but how do you kind of convert those fans, you know, those people who maybe think it isn't for them. And I wholeheartedly believe in tastings um, and in store at point of purchase when you've got people there. Um, awards, you know, letting people know the ratings. This, this is a 90 plus rated Moscato. So for a wine that you're going to see average between $12.99, $14.99 where you are, Yep. for a 90 point rating coming mm -hmm. out and 90 points means excellent. Yeah. Um, you know, you always struggle with this 85 to 89 people, people want that 90 plus, but what they don't realize is that means very good. Right. This is outstanding. So when you get a rating like that in coming in, letting people know what's there, um, standing behind the purchase. So, 
helping, you know, helping our retailers, making sure that we've got these materials and things going out so they can move some cases out to the floor. Because we know this, we know the saying, stack them high and let them fly. Anyone who lives in a grocery market, you don't have to go down the wine aisle. It's getting that perimeter. And unless you're specifically making a trip for wine, a lot of it is impulse. A lot of it is impulse. People see it. So another thing we did with the bottle, it's a perfect gift wine. It's beautiful to bring to anyone um, in coming in. You know, the color. There's actually a research study on the color that this color actually elicits a physical response. It's so a lot went into color. really designing. It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. A lot went into it. You've got the foil em embellishment, yeah. um, the name, Gemma de Luna, which means gem of the moon. So it was a very deliberate, very deliberate design, very deliberate launch in everything that's coming in. And the crazy thing was when I was doing a big event platform around the launch, people would mm -hmm. always come up and they'd be like, can I just have one of the empty bottles? <laughs> Can I, I, it's the prettiest bottle. Can I just have one of the empty bottles? People were wanting even the empty bottle. So you've got a memorable product and once people know it, they're going to go back for it. Is it bottle painted? How, what is, what is this? Bottle? It's painted. Yeah. yeah. It's actually painted. So if you, if you see yours, um, if you see right up top where you took the foil capsule off, okay. you'll see it is the dark glass with the light. And they are actually painted bottles. Oh. And this was another thing about Innovation Brands. Innovation Brands was formed by the team behind Luna De Luna. And if you remember Luna De Luna, it's still in the iconic cobalt blue bottle yep. that's there. Yep. But Luna De Luna with the wide range of the painted bottles and coming in mm -hmm. and it works. It helps people because, again, that wall of confusion and it kind of demystifies the whole experience for people. Yeah. You know, go grab the beautiful teal bottle. I mean, you'll notice it. You'll see it. Yeah. yeah. And, and they're bringing that strategy to the, all, all the new brands. Is, I mean, Luna de Luna, definitely like their bottles always stood out. It was always something different, but they're bringing it to these different lines. And do you have other lines of painted bottles? We do. Actually, one... One of the other ones that we have is called Living Coral, which is a sparkling a sparkling rosé. So this is another painted bottle and coming in, and this is a sparkling rosé. So again, what what's everyone going crazy for now? Rosé. Rosé, rosé, yeah. rosé. I need rosé all day and sparkling. So we brought those two hot trends together. But additionally, Living Coral, two years ago, I, I think it was two years ago when we launched this, right before COVID, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, however, Living Coral was the Pantone color of the year. And they brought that out in response to the global crisis around the coral reefs dying off. And oh. the color, Pantone named the color Living Coral to bring awareness to that cause. And we thought, what if we created a cause brand? Oh. Based it on that color. And Every bottle that we sell, a donation is made to an organization that helps to restore the world's coral reefs. So this is actually a cause-related brand designed around, incepted for the cause and coming in. So Very cool. Well, and, you know, um, it's it's less important to the world, but it looks really cool next to the Gemma de Luna. It's like a Lily Pulitzer <laughs> it's like a Lily Pulitzer exactly. party. Exactly. <laughs> Saving the coral reefs is way more decor, noble. You go into home decor. Yeah. Exactly. Outdoor decor and everything. What are your colors there? They're teal and coral, teal and coral. Everyone's gaga for teal and coral. Yeah. And I don't know if you ever noticed coral. Everybody should go out and get themselves a coral blouse, a coral blazer, a coral dress. It's beautiful. It looks beautiful on everyone. It just, it makes you, it gives you so color this right line away. Looks beautiful on everyone. It's good with the tan as well. Everyone. And you know something that's happened to, um, we've both been in this industry a while. Not, we've been in this for a while. We won't disclose how long. <laughs> we won't disclose. But, yes. but one of the things that I love and one of the things yeah. that, 
I found the most exciting about innovation brands that when I looked, when I was first joining the company and looked at these brands and just said, I need to work on this. These people aren't afraid. They get it. The wine industry has changed. It's not stuffy. It's not stodgy anymore. I mean, you're always going to have your wine snobs and your people there. But if you've got the quality in bottle, so you're not a gimmick, people are really embracing. You know, remember the whole critter label craze? Sure do. And everything with that. You know, the critter labels where everything kind of went. So... Mm -hmm. People are really letting, you know, bringing fun into it, bringing fun into it. And let's face it, it's fun. Bubbly wine is fun. Yeah, right. Wine is fun. Wine wine should not be rocket science. It should be enjoyable, right? It for the for the you know, there are some of us that we we like it to be rocket science. We geek out on it and we have a grand old time. But for the majority of consumers, it's something of just it's just pleasure. Like, come on, you want to buy something that you enjoy and you know, being able to consistently know there's quality in this bottle is, is super important. And I think it's very smart of the, the, the brands to make the bottles stand out. So I, you know, in a way that no one else, I mean, can anyone even, do you have a patent on this? Like, can anyone even try to, to mimic it? Unfortunately, it's very hard to patent a design. Painting a bottle. And, but, and a design, and even if you get a design patent, it's not as strong and protectable because you just totally. have to alter it a teeny tiny little bit. But you know, you can be the original if you actually look yeah. at the Luna de Luna label and logo right underneath. It says the original. Yeah. And Luna de Luna, I, I even though it came out with the colored bottles, the original doesn't point to the bottle. The original points to the fact that they were the first blends brought into the U.S. that listed Mm -hmm. it. Pinot Grigio Chardonnay, Cabernet Merlot, because remember when the U.S. consumer did not understand the blend and French wine. So California kind of went down the path of varietal. Here's the varietal. Then the U.S. consumer got trained to look for varietals, but... Then they'd see blends were confused and didn't know it. So what what the team behind this and the team who ultimately conceived this did was demystify those blends for the U.S. Because what a blend allows that winemaker to do is bring out the perfection of each grape yeah. coming in to create a more enjoyable experience. You know, sometimes when you have a straight varietal, it can be a little tough. Yeah. It can be a little difficult if you're not a huge, huge fan of that varietal. Right. I love Zinfandel Primitivo. It can be a bit hot because of the alcohol right. content. So, you know, not, a, you know, not a lot of people. I'm probably one of the weirdos that's going to pick a quality Merlot Mm -hmm. over a quality Cabernet Sauvignon. Yeah. Always a big fan of it. And and that's why Merlot always kind of does this, you know, little roller coaster in popularity. Yeah. But, you know, that's the team. Oh, and that's one of our things from innovation brands, from IWB, always be innovating, always be innovating, always be innovating, Mm -hmm. bringing something different forward. You know, what are we going to do? Whether it's like our little our giveaway, our little branded socks, you know, who puts the, look at, they're actually Luna, they're actually Gemma de Luna bottles. It's actually a shaped (laughs) bottle, you know, so those are different little things, you know, to try to, try to capture the retailer, you know, to give something extra, um, you know, to our consumers to give away, always looking at something different, whether it's what's in the bottle, what's on the bottle, how we go to market, um, doing something different you know we're super excited this year um we're bringing back our italy trips our italy oh, education trips finally so great. traveling again but our trips our trips anyone in the trade should be like wanting to join us for that because we're family we're italian and you know we're families we love hard we fight hard we get along <laughs> you know it's we're like truly that Italian family and coming home, but That's we don't need a trip with like, I love you. I hate you. <laughs> You're my family. Exactly. 
Exactly. And you know, we don't <laughs> march. We don't, you know, we don't get on those trips. I, I mean, I've been in this industry a long time. And man, yes. on some of these and going out and you're in a beautiful place, nap and that, but you're like, how many vineyards do I need to go through? How many barrel yeah. rooms do I need to go through? How many this? You know, we take you on the Italian experience, our family. Yeah. We take you on cooking classes with our Italian families. We put you in the little Fiat 500 and we, and you know, we take you on <laughs> trips and going through. You know, we take, we're, we're located in yeah. Verona, the city of love. We love you. You know, we, we take you around all these different things. So it's a totally different approach. We want you to be family. That's the way, you know, that's the way we look yeah. at it. And, and in doing that, we're looking to bring a level of service to our customers that honestly, service is a tough thing now. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, there are not as many people to do it. <laughs> uh but uh, it, for sure. And, it, and that is people it, it's that know how to do it. Yeah. 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 So, you know, we, we really look at doing that. Whenever we've been at WSWA, everybody knows us because we bring a chef over from Italy. And we're the ones, we're going to feed you. You're going to have some pasta and fun and enjoy some glasses of wine. And doing it, you know, it's it's family. Yeah. It, I mean, it just makes sense. I mean, the, the thing is with wine and in this industry in specific, you know, there are plenty of products that are sold, uh, you know, and that don't have family behind it like you do in the wine industry. And that's sort of where, you know, this show kind of comes in, into play. I mean, the, the stories and the people there, this is an industry where there are stories and people and, you know, unique innovations and unique ideas, but they come from you know, real people working and, and, and the real families behind these brands um, and, and, and these products that we enjoy. Um, Lisa, it was wonderful, wonderful to have you on the show. Thank you so much Thank for you. joining. Um, I, I'm, I was excited to try the Moscato. This was my first time and it was really, um, really delightful. So I'm going to enjoy the rest of that bottle. Um, and I'd love to have you back on and, um, we can talk about, it's five o'clock somewhere. huh? Say that again. It's five o'clock somewhere, right? Five o'clock somewhere. Yeah. Table. Or 3 PM somewhere. <laughs> it's, um, and never too it, early. Yeah. Never too early. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it, it would be great. We'd love to have you back on the show and, um, you know, talk about some more adventures in the wonderful world of wine. I love that. That would be great. Thank you so much. It was great chatting with you.